I'm Robin Clevett, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to my channel, it's lovely to see you. And if you're an existing subscriber, viewer, welcome back. Now, you know that I am roof mad, a roof construction mad. I spent my whole carpentry and joinery career building roofs, every kind of roof, and quite a lot, I get the opportunity to take one apart again. And generally speaking, I really, really enjoy taking back an old roof structure, looking the way it was put together, measuring it, checking how straight it is, purely to see just how good the previous carpenters or whoever built it did it. I just find that really interesting, especially when I go into some of these beautiful church structures and look at the joinery in the roof. It's almost, well, you never see anything like it. It's absolutely amazing. And to think they did that without power tools back in the day is amazing. But there are times when I take a roof off where I actually look to myself and think, well, this probably wasn't a carpenter that did this roof. Because in this roof, for example, I have seen some absolute shockers and I'm gonna show you just exactly what they are. So this roof is a hip tend and it turns through 90 degrees, which gives us another hip and a big valley. So it's fairly straightforward carpentry work. It's just a whole load of common rafters up to a ridge. We've got ceiling joists running through and then it's just got two changes of direction, which is no big deal. Fairly basic carpentry, but there are some really interesting bits. For example, there's a rafter here, which is just two bits of timber but jointed together with a nail spike through them. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing there because there's another rafter here, a valley jack there, and nothing's square, nothing's parallel. It's as if they've cut something, tried to fit it, just nailed it up. This is a great one here. We've got this amazing valley jack rafter here and they've just put this like little wedge of something, some description in there because obviously they couldn't make it fit. There's other rafters here that actually don't even make it down to the valley. They just sort of sit past this, what is a, or what is an ashlar wall, but again, it's just busted up against. There's no bird's mouths or anything like that. Um, it is an absolute classic. I mean, we've pulled out bits of stud work and some of them were just flopping around. I mean, they were just held by the fact there was a bit of plasterboard tacked to it on the other side. Now, as I come through this section, it's a little bit more modern and newer and the stand is not bad. It's all right, it's average, but then I want to talk to you a little bit about insulation. And when this insulation was put in, the regs were beginning to change. So we've got a very thin insulation here. It's around about 50 millimetres. It doesn't comply anymore. There was another form of insulation underneath, but that wouldn't comply. But what I want to talk about is all of the gaps that you get with insulation. Now, PIR is cut in by hand in between rafters. And if the rafters have been put in and they're not that parallel, not that square, it's a really tricky job. And people tend to just start adding bits and pieces and leaving lots of gaps everywhere. There's a new building reg that's come out now. In fact, in the new year, I believe it's going to be mandatory where we have to actually prove that the performance of the insulation works. And what that means is in this scenario where we've got bits of insulation with, with big gaps here, here, all of this sort of stuff, all of this sort of stuff. And then there's bits that are just held in with spikes and nails, big gaps there. Obviously that's not gonna comply, it's not gonna work. You're gonna get a lot of cold spots and that sort of stuff. So things are changing and I'll include an image now of how it's gonna look or how it should look to make it work and actually make it comply because so much energy will be leaching out of this structure through all of these gaps, more cold air will be meeting warm air, there's all kinds of issues with that. And I mean, you know, it's just kind of good building practice, I suppose. We just need to start practicing good building practice. So I'm happy to be saying that all of this is going, I'm taking everything off, the rafters, the insulation, everything is going back and we're gonna rebuild it. So we're really cracking on here. We've got all of the tiles off the roof and we're now taking the battening off the roof saving whatever we can, but battening is really hard to save. The nails are just like, oh, it's just not worth taking them out for what it costs to buy it. And then we're gonna take the rafters out. This roof isn't particularly brilliant. I'm gonna take you up and show you a few bits about that. A couple of sort of crazy things here. So the old hip is sort of just balanced on top 
of the wall plate. The wall plate is just sitting on the top of a joist. It's not tied back at all with the outriggers to the next joists. So this whole hipped end is just basically just balancing there. And if it wasn't for the fact that it was quite steep, it would want to keep spreading its way out from this wall. And the whole roof is just shimmed up with the odd bit of tile here and there. I mean, it's not masses of weight, but it's not brilliant. They've leveled it up with the odd bit of slate and packer here and there. And then inside, well, obviously it's reclaimed timber they used to build this roof. There's bits missing and the hips are all just sort of bodged in any old way. It's certainly not the kind of thing that I like to do. But there we go, it's all coming off. We've got a lot of the interior out of the way now and we're going to get the rest of these battens off and we're going to cut this all back, back to the end of the ridge, maybe back past this roof window opening. We've, we're lucky enough to have a bit of a floor to work on, so that's great too. So that's it, let's get it smashed out. So we've had a really good go at removing all of the old roof rafters, cutting them all back, really sort of gradually taking them back, taking them back, taking them back. And now we are left with what is the floor. So our next job is actually just to cut out some of this floor. So that's taking up these um, chipboard panels, knocking the ceilings down, getting rid of that. And then we'll be cutting the joists out, but we're going to leave a section over what used to be the utility room, what still is the utility room, because we've actually got the machines still rigged up for washing and drying, believe it or not. So we will leave this section in. We'll take this other section out. And the reason we need to get that out now before we take too much more of the roof off is because we need to demolish the wall all the way around for the new extension to enable me to get my oversight in DPM, so the damp proof membrane, um, up against the old existing floor. So that's what we're going to do. We've got a stack here, which is like the stack from the Hammer House of Horrors. Everything here is from the Hammer House of Horrors. This is the best bit, this gable here. So uh, this had some white UV, UPVC cladding on it, this gable. And of course, you know, I'd expect it to be either a block wall like the other end, or if it is timber framed, at least the studs the right way around. I mean, what is this? It's a patchwork of plywood, okay? literally bits of plywood just tacked on it is literally like a patchwork like a patchwork quilt yeah and it's just that is it and on the other side of it we just got pir which has been trimmed down to suit the thickness of the studs and the studs are turned sideways and that was it so i mean the whole wall thickness was no more than about 60 millimeters or two and a half inches. And the rest of this roof, it's unbelievable. I mean, this is a great one here. I know this is a bit of a bodged together stack, but this rafter here was actually built through. You can see it on the on inside of the stack. In fact, if I try and carefully come up here, it's all a bit dodgy, but I'm a bit of a lightweight, so I'll just try and get an image of that. Yeah. It's pretty difficult to see because there's a flu in the way, but it's actually built in, which is not very nice. So we're going to remove the stack and then we will leave the rest of this structure for now because, some climbing around, because as I say, we need to get this out, get this wall down, get the oversights in, bricklayer can come back, get it built up to wall plate level, and then we're away. So let's crack on.
The roof is out as much as I need at the moment. And now you can see these were the floor panels here. There's the old wall plate. Everything used here was like reclaimed. It wasn't up to much. The old brick walls were then lined around the inside with a cavity. Even where they've cut this staircase in here, everything was, was bad. The headrooms were awful. They've literally chopped the joists off. So the joists are coming through. This one here, they've cut it off and they've just spiked it in the end of the newel post. So that was effectively holding this bit of floor over here. This joist here, they've just cut it out for the, for the headroom. And even, I'm five foot seven, which is not that tall as you know. And look, even I'm hitting it. So, and this was only done a few years ago. And where they've hacked the joists out here, look at this bit of apron lining here. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You'd have trouble building that so out of square or out of straight, wouldn't you? It's just, everything is just cobbled together. I've never seen so much rubbish. Anyway, I mean, that's enough of that. I'm always moaning about things. I'm gonna be taking out these chipboard panels right the way back to this one here. This room under here, we're leaving intact. We need all of this stuff out. We're gonna cut the joists off, remove the joists, and then we're gonna get the walls out in this L shape, so roughly to here, all the way out, down to the ground. That's our next job, and we're gonna smash it now. For these chipboard panels, we're gonna take them back out, all the way over to here, this bit will stay, and then we're gonna cut the joists out, one at a time, take them out carefully, but before we take the joists out, we'll push the ceiling through. So I think what we'll do, to keep it nice and safe, take a board up, or a couple of boards up, and then we'll push the ceiling through, from where we are, so you'll see that in a little bit of um, time lapse that we'll do. Obviously take these wall plates out. This water pipe here is actually live. That goes round and feeds the site toilet, so I can just unplug that if I need to, or simply cut a little bit of chipboard out of the way. So that's it, so we're gonna just carefully peel back these boards, and they've all been put in straight lines as well, so there's no, they're not bonded at all, there's no stagger in them. Everything here has been done like, um, no one's read the instructions, They've just done it in their own way. So they put a full board, full board, full board, full board. Then they've put a full board, full board, full board, full board. I mean, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But there you go. It's all gonna go, and we're gonna do it the RC way. Rafters aren't tied to the sides of the ceiling joists. So, I mean, basically, that was just ready to push off. I mean, there's three nails holding all yeah, that one. That roof was doing that the whole time, pressure. Know, it's just pushing it out. Roof spread. That's just outrageous. Now, what we do is slide it over the edge here and I'll let it go down. That's how I'll go down. That's all this horrible insulation in the skip. The name of the game at this view is not throw it around. Just handle it with care. I'll get my gloves on there in a minute. That can go straight in the skip with the other with the spiders. repairs. I oh, know they've done that to get these cables through. They've drilled big holes to get a drill in to drill these huge holes to take one little cable. That is foxy, isn't it? Such a bosh. Just put some pieces everywhere.
So we've taken the floor panels up and we've pushed the ceiling boards through. We've got a load of cabling in here. This has all been made safe. It's all cut back to the fuse board. So all we've got to do effectively is just chop it out where we can and pull any of the long legs back. But the electricians have said that they don't really want to keep anything. So that's good. So we've now got to the position where we can cut these joists out one at a time and roll them out and get them onto the recycling pile. And then we can carefully start tackling this wall and getting it out of the way. And um, incidentally, this wall, so the old wall of this part of the building was a single brick wall, so one brick thick or nine inch, 225. And that's moved all over the place. And then they've lined the whole building with a block skin. And um, I don't know why they did that, to be fair, because um, they've, whether or not, I mean, they've packed the joists up. The joists are just literally sitting on like this one here on a little bit of roof tile. Um, they're all like that, you know, just sitting on bits of roof tile. Nothing is holding the roof down. So for example, the normal thing you do, you'd have a wall plate bedded on level. You put your joists on top of that and you'd build away. And then you'd go around with some strong galvanized straps and they would be fixed down the wall like a plate tie. And that's basically to stop any uplift because believe it or not, wind is incredibly powerful and building roofs have blown off in, in their entirety in the past. So um, yeah, there's none of that here. There's not even any fixing. So these joists are literally landed just on top of this, which is nice for us taking it apart. But um, yeah, it's not brilliant. Anyway, let's get these joists out now and then we can carefully start removing all the brick wall. We're leaving half the floor because we've got a room there which has got some stuff in we want to make sure we protect. So I'm going to cut the joists off in situ over where the wall is and then we'll just take them out. They're unfixed so it's a matter of me just cutting them and Andy will just feed them out over the other side. So I'll get, get into position mate and then um, we'll, we'll cut the first one out. I'm going to use a recip saw. It's probably the easiest thing for this, it's just a matter of me. And if I cut these on a slight angle, then it will just sit there while I get myself into shape, put the recip saw to one side and move them out of the way. You ready, mate? I'll cut this, work, this one out of the way, yeah. Just going to go through like that now, taking them all out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. It's a bit on there. Hold on. Yeah. Move this out of the way.
cut this pipe out of the way. Good show, boys. Good show. Yeah. Nice bit of stuff. Nice bit of timber. Isn't it, mate? When you come up the stairs now, it's going to be good fun. So we have taken out everything we need to take out to enable us to cut down the walls, get them out of the way, ready to get our floors in on the extension, make it all amazing, seal the new space, build the new walls, and then we can embark on doing the rest of the roofs. So that's it, that's me. I'm just going to get down here now, have a quick tidy up. And soon enough, We'll be in what will be the new space, and I can't wait for that as well. I'm Robin Clevett. Thanks for joining me on The Big Build. I'll catch you all again soon.